All right, this one's for you, Sophie. Referring to Sophie Ashley, she's at Boss Lady Construction on Instagram. Great content. Give her a follow. Had a question about walking through the pressure test and the evacuation process. So here's what we got. Gauges are hooked up like we normally do. We've got uh, red to the high side, blue to the low side. Really, in this case, colors don't matter, but it's good to stay in the same habit. And then my yellow hose is hooked here to my nitrogen bottle, to my regulator. I'm gonna open up the bottle, and I'm gonna crank this regulator. And on the leaving side of the regulator, I'm gonna crank this thing to a pressure that's higher than my test pressure. So my test pressure is gonna be 300 PSI in this case. I'm gonna crank that thing to a little bit higher than 300 PSI. Now what I like to do, uh, just wanna just go over a couple things. To the left of these service valves is the line set and my evaporator coil, and that has no pressure on it. To the right of these valves is the refrigerant charge that comes with this condensing unit. So those valves are closed, and we are not gonna open them until the very end. Um, so what we're doing by hooking up these gauges, we are reading and pressurizing to the left of those valves. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up. I like to open up my high side, and I like to watch my low side climb. And I'm gonna shoot for around 300 PSI. And as we get a little bit closer to it, I'll start slowing down, and you know, if we get a little bit more than 300 PSI, that's fine. All right, well, sometimes the pressures don't equalize through the system when you just add it to one side. And so what you end up having to do is close off your nitrogen and then just open these two valves right here. And that will equalize the pressure within the gauge. And what you want those pressures to do is stabilize before you start your pressure test, which is what I'm gonna show you next on Measure Quick. Here's what I'm talking about. The high side pressure is a lot higher than the low side pressure. And they're starting to equalize. The low side's creeping up, the high side's creeping down. But we need these pressures to be equal before we start our test. So we open up the valves of the gauge to get these pressures to equalize. The reason why we have to do that is because TXVs these days don't have an internal uh, pressure equalization feature like the old ones used to. The next thing we're going to do is go back into the main menu and choose the temperature compensated pressure test. We're going to start the timer now that our pressure has equalized at 382 PSI. And we're going to watch it for at least 10 minutes. Now I got busy doing something else and so a lot more time elapsed, but that's actually a good thing. As you can see the pressure has stayed true at 383 PSI and we've passed the test. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is blow the nitrogen charge. So I've got my caps off of both sides here. And we're going to hook up the Schrader core remover first because we want to be able to get this nitrogen out in a hurry, uh, getting all the volume we can out of there. We also want to remove any debris when we uh, remove that nitrogen, and we don't want a Schrader valve in the way to catch that debris and prevent it from exiting the system. Schrader core remover does not have a depressor for the Schrader valve because its job is to remove the Schrader valve. Okay, so I screw it on and I make sure that this valve is closed. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's closed or open because we're not depressing the Schrader valve, so we're not actually accessing the system yet. Now, the tool also has this attachment here, and that's going to be the tool that removes the Schrader core. So we're just going to start it out like this, and we're going to screw it in tight. Now with this valve open, we've got a clear path so that we can push in the plunger and you'll kind of feel it grab the Schrader valve. Now because I have like over 300 PSI pressure in here, this plunger is trying to push out really, really hard. And so we're going to slowly unscrew the Schrader valve out until we're sure that we have it out. Okay, I think I have the Schrader valve out, but I'm not going to know for sure until I turn this valve off with this plunger all the way out I'm able to turn that valve off and now I can take this fitting off and yeah because I have pressure on it my crater is out well despite this valve being closed I'm still letting a little pressure out that's not a bad thing for this test but I'm probably going to need to grab my spare depressor when I put it back on for the vacuum. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to release all the pressure out of the suction line all at once. And the reason why we're doing it at the suction line is because that's the flow direction that the refrigerant will take when we first start it up. 
Because any debris that we have in the liquid line, we want to pull it from the liquid line into the indoor unit through the dryer and back out here. If we did it the other way around, we'd be pulling the debris in to the other side of the dryer. And then when we start the unit up, the refrigerant will be going in the opposite direction. And we might um, release that debris back into the system. So we want to try to release it in the same direction that the refrigerant will be flowing when we do our initial startup, which in this case is cooling mode. Okay, there's just a little bit of pressure left in here. Once it gets down to a whisper, we'll actually close this valve and because uh, we don't want the system to go neutral pressure. We want to stay in the slight positive so that we don't pull any moisture in and make it that much harder on the vacuum pump. Well, I switched my Schrader core remover tool to one that actually would hold when the valve closed. Uh, so I'll probably be getting rid of this one because I can't trust it anymore. We need to be able to trust these things to not only uh, hold pressure, but more importantly, be able to hold a vacuum. Okay, so because we're not always sure whether we've released all the pressure from the liquid line when we release it out of the suction line, I've, I'm testing these Sourman Smart Probes. They were kind enough to send them to me. Uh, and so I verified, as you'll see in this slide, that we only have two PSI on the liquid line. So that's really what we want to do. Just leave a very slight positive, and then we'll go, we're going to next hook up our vacuum rig. And Fuel Piece makes replacement oil. Super easy. Don't even need a funnel. We're just going to pour this in here again. You can do this while the vacuum pump is running, which is really cool if you're pulling a long vacuum on a really big system. You need to change your oil midway. You don't have to break your vacuum. You just do it on the fly. And right, now we're ready to pull a vacuum. And as you can see, I've got my core remover tool still hooked up, valve off, and I've got a single large diameter hose. That's a quarter inch on the unit side and a 3 8 inch on the vacuum pump side. I also have my Sourman Micron gauge that's ready to go, but I also have another Micron gauge that I am going to connect to the liquid line connection. So I'm only pulling the vacuum out of one side. Now that liquid line still has a Schrader valve in it, so I'm going to put this adapter in here, Schrader depressor in first, and then my, um, my probe for my Microns will go on this end right here. So let's go ahead and hook it up. We are ready to start the vacuum. Uh, we got everything plugged in. We make sure all of our connections are tight. One other thing I want to note is that you always want to put your probe, try to make it uh, point it upward so that any oil that may be in the system, of course, this is a brand new line set, so there won't be any oil, but if you're doing a repair, there'll be oil and other contaminants in the system. You want to raise that sensor up. The other thing is we want to start out with opening the ballast of our vacuum pump. And what that does is it pulls the vacuum, but it doesn't involve the oil. Uh, so we're not going to contaminate the oil with uh, the system when we first start it up. There may be contaminants in an existing system. Of course, this is a new system, but it's always a good idea that you pull down to about 2,000 microns with the ballast open, and then you close it and you pull down the rest of the way. So now that everything is hooked up, we're going to start it up. And we're going to start monitoring the vacuum gauge and just make sure that's pulling down normal. And then we're going to be able to leave it for a few minutes as it continues to pull down. And <laughs> I forgot to turn this valve on. So after a couple seconds of realizing my microns weren't coming down, I made sure that I opened up that valve and the tone of the vacuum pump changed. It was actually starting to move some vapor through there. We should start seeing this micron gauge start dropping down any second now. So our vacuum is pulling down pretty quick. Once it gets down to 2,000, we're going to go ahead and switch over and close the ballast, but it's dropping really, really quick. It should just be a few more seconds. We'll flip it over. We'll let it run on down to at least 300 or lower before we even think about shutting it off. On a brand new line set, this line set's only about 25 feet long, we should be able to pull this down in just a matter of a few minutes. Okay, so just a few minutes have passed by and we're down to 268 microns, which is great. Uh, I also want to draw attention to the fact that our micron gauge is on the opposite end of the piping system than where we're actually pulling the vacuum from. So this micron gauge is reading all through the line sets, through the air handler coil, and back here. So that's really the ideal location. That way you're getting the worst case scenario microns, which in this case, worst case scenario is pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate the system. 
by turning this valve off and this is called our decay test and we do not want to see this micron level rise above 500 and it looks like you know, and we'll go ahead just for extra measure turn our vacuum pump off that way we're not pulling through the valve there's no other forces to this uh, that are acting on this system and as you can see our microns are still dropping that is an indicator of a very tight system typically if you see your microns rising you either have some moisture in the line some oil that's giving up some vapor refrigerant that's causing that pressure to go up or you may have a leak in this case this is very tight we're going to go ahead and let that uh, decay test sit for just a few minutes and make sure that it doesn't rise above 500 and then we'll move on to the next step and this is where having a really good trader removal tool that doesn't leak is really important because we're relying on that valve to hold so that we don't start pulling in air and moisture and undo all the hard work we just did uh, when we pulled the vacuum. So now that this fitting is tight, we can open this valve now. And now that opens a path for our plunger to put the uh, trader valve back in. We can plunge that Schrader valve back in and snug it until we feel it stop turning. You'll get a feel for this tool after you use it. And now at this point, we may be tempted to take this fitting off. But when we do, we're going to let just a little bit of air in, and that's not what we want to do. So we need to break this vacuum. And the way we're going to do it, everybody does it a little differently. I'm going to break it with the field charge of R410A that needs to go in the system. Okay, so the manufacturer says that we need to add an additional... 0.6 ounces per foot of line set that goes beyond 15 feet. Well, we used a total of 23 feet of line set. I know that because I bought a 25 foot line set. I had two feet left over. So I used a total of 23 feet. We're allowed to have 15 before we need to add any refrigerant. That leaves eight pounds of refrigerant that I need to add 0.6 ounces per pound to. And that equals 4.8 ounces. So that's what we're going to add here. And we've got our tank. We're going to zero out our scale. And we're going to add 0.48, I'm sorry, 4.8 ounces or just under half a pound. Every manifold is a little bit different. I'm going to open up this valve here that connects the yellow hose to the blue hose within the manifold. And then I've got a little ball valve here on the hose. And I am just going to start dribbling in a little bit of refrigerant until I get my scale reads not pounds, but I wish it read ounces, but it didn't. So I'm going to add just under half a pound of refrigerant. And it's climbing. It's getting there. All right, there we go. We're right at half a pound. And our factory, I'm sorry, our field charge has been added in. Now our line set is in a slight positive pressure, and we can tell that if we open up the Saruman app, we'll see that's under slight positive pressure. Now we can remove all this equipment here. Now we don't want to release all the pressure to our micron ga gauges. That can do damage to them, but they're able to take a little bit of positive pressure. And I found that adding the field charge is just enough pressure to pressurize the line sets, get them out of a vacuum, but not overpressurize them where they'll ruin the probes. Okay, this unit is ready for startup. I've gotten rid of my vacuum pump, my um, the refrigerant tank, the scale. I don't need any of that stuff because I know I've weighed in the proper charge. If I get some weird pressure and temperature readings, I'm not going to be tempted to just start adding refrigerant. I'm going to look into it further because I've weighed in the, the field. Finally, we're going to take our service tool and we're going to open up this liquid line and the suction line valves. And this will release the charge that's in the condensing unit to the line set. So I've got my smart probes and gauges hooked up here. And I've got the liquid line, just a probe hooked up there because we shouldn't have to do anything there. And we're just going to do a quick startup. The municipal inspectors on the way and here in Bowling Springs Lake, they will not give you a mechanical final until they see the unit running. So we're going to do a very quick startup just to get that satisfied. And then we're going to be doing a full ACA 310 with measure quick commissioning. But that will be a video for another day. Thanks for watching.